Thank you both for being here with us tonight. And Vicki, take it away. Thank you, Olivia. It's great to be with all of you today. We're gonna start with a recipe that I call Colcannon Stuffed Baked Potato. So it's kind of a takeoff on a St. Patrick's Day um, traditional food of Colcannon, which is potatoes mixed with either cabbage or kale. And my version uses red cabbage. It's, I also, also should add that it includes onions as well with either the kale or the cabbage. Mine is going to be with red cabbage because I just love the color. And what I'm doing is instead of using just kind of a mashed potato, I'm actually stuffing it back into baked potatoes. So it's really quite easy. And because we're kind of focusing tonight on plant-based on a budget, it makes a great beginning for a meal to start with something like potatoes, or rice or some other dishes that we'll be showing you tonight because they're so budget friendly. So we're going to start with this potato dish. So what we do is start with as many baked potatoes as you like in the oven. I, my recipe is for four baked potatoes. So we're taking just a, a russet potato, scrubbing it clean, poking it several times for the steam to be able to escape baking it in the oven at 375 for roughly an hour or until it feels fork tender. You could easily double that amount so that you have more for several days, or you could have that amount if you wanted to, you know, only have just a little bit of this recipe, depending upon how many people will be eating it throughout your week. So what we have today is this four that I'm starting with. And I'm going to basically slice each of these potatoes after they're cool enough to touch into halves like this, and then scoop out into a dish with just um, an easy, oh, here's my spoon, just kind of scooping with a spoon the soft part, the flesh of the potato, leaving the skins intact. So what we wanna do is just kind of gradually you know, carefully pull out the center, leaving the skin um, with a little bit of a border so that we're not piercing it. I'm just gonna do that with both halves. I've already started the other potatoes to get it going in the dish to show you what we'll do next. And so I'm just gathering, you know, hopefully not piercing this with my spoon. And um, this is all we need to do is just kind of grab the main part of this um, you know, delicious potato, leaving the skins intact, putting it into a bowl. And then what I like to do is just sprinkle the inside with a little bit of salt. If you don't use salt, you can leave that out. But I really do like that adding flavor to the base because if your skin is clean and your potatoes are, you know, ready for you to eat the whole thing, you might want to eat that skin and you're going to want to make it have, have a little bit more flavor perhaps. So now I'm just mashing what we have and I'm adding to this um, a little bit of, in my case, I'm using some soy milk. You could add any kind of plant-based milk that you like. I use just uh, plain, the Trader Joe's version of soy milk where it is just soybeans and water, organic. Um, and I like that, it's a good price. It's pretty um, much the lowest version cost-wise of any soy milk I have found, maybe about $1.79, something like that for a quart. And it is um, in those aseptic containers that you can leave in your pantry to be nice and um, handy, no matter, you know, day or night. So um, I like to use that, but you can use any kind of plant milk that you prefer. So it could be, you know, cashew milk, coconut milk, hemp milk, whatever, um, almond milk and so on. And so now we're, we have our potatoes and to that we're going to add our vegetables. So typically in the oven, while my um, potatoes are baking for about an hour, I start my vegetables. So I start in a saute pan, um, an onion, and I saute it until it gets a little bit soft. And then I add to that five cups of shredded cabbage, four cups, sorry, of shredded red cabbage. And so then we end up with a beautiful pan full of purple cabbage and onions. And I noticed today that usually I buy, I have bigger potatoes than I have today. So it, my ratio of 
potatoes and vegetables, it's a little heavier on the cabbage. So in this case today, I may, as we add to our potatoes, not use all of it and save some of it reserved for another use throughout the week. Um, because, you know, if you have more fleshy potatoes in your, what turns into kind of a mashed potato mixture, um, you'll have a different combination of uh, potatoes and cabbage. So we'll kind of see because this ends up looking like kind of a lot today. I, and when we're done creating our beautiful mixture, um, usually I do this on the heat, but I'm adding three tablespoons of balsamic vinegar, which helps to restore that purple color if it's faded and starts to give it a little sweetness and acidity that mixes really well with the creamy potatoes. So now we'll just go ahead and add, probably add most of this to our potatoes. And then we're gonna give that a stir. Maybe I'll just see if we need all of it. And I'm going to put some gloves on. You don't need to do this, but it can be kind of messy if you're going to use your hands. You can definitely use a spoon instead. But I like to kind of get in there and pack all of those potatoes together in the pan or into the um, skins. So I'm just mixing this together. This is really beautiful. Just potatoes and onions and this red cabbage that's just so gorgeous. And it smells really good. You can add a little bit of salt. You can add a little bit of pepper. You can add a little bit of Creole seasoning if you want, just a little bit of hot sauce, whatever you like. And then I'm just basically stuffing this into my potato skin. So I've got a whole platter of them here and we'll just literally kind of fill them up. These refrigerate really beautifully and they're just truly delicious for breakfast, lunch, or dinner. I mean, they're kind of a, they make a natural dinner as a kind of main dish if you have a couple of these or with some vegetables or, um, you know, a veggie burger, anything you might like, but it's a really budget friendly food because cabbage is a food that is generally, um, you know, lasts a long time in the refrigerator. And it's usually you get a lot for at one, you know, one cabbage will make quite a bit of um, an ingredient as you shred it into something else. So here we are, we've got our, we're stuffing our filling back in. And this is what I like to do is sort of overfill it so that each one becomes really just um, really looks loaded and ready to create a really nice meal. So this, you could serve this with a salad. Um, you could warm this up for breakfast, lunch, or dinner, as I say. So we've got just kind of mounding a little bit above the top, kind of covering the whole thing. You could sprinkle with a little bit more salt if you want, just over the top. And now I'm going to sprinkle it with a little bit of fresh cilantro as well for a little extra color. And it's a delicious dish to enjoy for any meal. So if we were just to take, generally, if I were to have you know, I probably would have two of these as a meal, you know, two halves, and it looks just like this. Michelle? Sorry about that, I need to unmute. Okay. Uh, now I'm getting a message here, is it? All right, so I am unmuted because I'm getting a message like I'm not. You can hear me? Yes. Okay, good. All right. So the first thing I'm going to make tonight is uh, granola. Uh, it's one of those things. It's a very handy food. It's another way to have oats. They're great on, you know, like in parfaits with just a bowl with some plant milk or on uh, uh, smoothie bowls. They can just add up quickly for the price. So what I'm making now is very versatile. It says peanut butter, but we're allergic here. So I'm using almond butter. You can use what kind you want. I'm taking, I already made half the recipe. So this makes quite a bit. And this is three cups that calls for six cups of old fashioned oats. And I'm only using three for this. You can see it's a lot. I've got walnuts in here, great for um, 
omega-3s, but you can use other ones. I've got uh, salt, cinnamon, flax meal. Flax meal is also another great source of the omega-3s. So I'm going to just uh, combine this. If you don't want it, there are ways to get around, you know, not you, you don't have to use oil. There are ways to do that. If you don't want the oil that's in here, you want a neutral oil. And one way to save money on food is not to have to throw so much out. We throw 30 to 40% of our food out. And oils are something that a lot of them, you know, they get rancid pretty quickly. So I rarely use oil, but what I use, I keep in, like if I have a neutral oil for, uh, roasting or baking, I'll keep it in the refrigerator so it lasts longer. Next, I'm just going to put um, the nut butter, brown sugar, applesauce, and I am using oil tonight. And you put that in a saucepan over medium heat just to get it, melt the sugar, and combine. Doesn't take long. But like I said, if you're not going to use the oil, please do add a little bit more of the applesauce or the nut butter, because there's there are a lot of oats and you really want to be sure that they get coated. And so if there's not enough liquid or moist uh, ingredients, they're not going to, so. so stir this. Um, you can add a lot of things into this after it's cooked that you might like, like you might, uh, dried fruit or the freeze-dried fruit, chocolate chips, coconut flakes, whatever you like. This will save a lot of money over store-bought once you have all the ingredients and it is good. I think one thing people do, I mean, if you can buy the oats in bulk, that helps. If you are gluten-free, you wanna be sure you get gluten-free oats. The oats don't have gluten in them, but they you can get cross-contamination from the, where they are produced or uh, packaged, so something to be careful for, but you can buy a lot of things in bulk that can help. I think it is important, like um, ways that we lose money is um, buying more than we're going to use, not storing properly, and not using everything that we can out of that item. So I'm going to turn that off and just pour it in. Now it does take a bit time to get this totally to coat coated. It does smell really good. It's a nice combination. Again, use if you have other things you'd rather use. The brown sugar, I've always, in other uh, demos, said that um, not all sugars are vegan. It seems like they should be, but with the, the white sugars, they tend, they often will have, um, be, they'll use bone char to whiten them. So Wholesome is vegan, but I found out this week, I don't buy sugar too often either, that their sugar is also vegan. And this was $2 less than whole, uh, wholesome brand. So that's good. And I've got two of these. So it takes a little bit to stir. You'd be pre preheating your oven to 250. I found that my convection oven won't go that low. So I had to put it on just the regular conventional baking in that work. So it does, like I said, it does take a bit of time to coat, to get everything coated, but you wanna take that time so you get a nice brown uh, product, finished product. So it does smell really good. My son loves granola and I, when he tried it, his like favorite granola is Love Crunch. I don't know if you've ever tried that. It's quite good, but it's not cheap at all. And when he saw how much can be made with this, you know, he wants to make his own and just add in, like he likes the, I think it's raspberry, some kind of fruit and chocolate. And all he has to do is add chocolate chips and the dried fruit or the, I think they use uh, freeze dried fruit in theirs and you've got something that makes a lot more for a lot less. Keep going with this. So like I said, preheated. If you're using and making the whole recipe at once, you're going to need two line baking sheets and you put it in the oven. It takes an hour because it's a low heat 
and you spread it out evenly on the page, make the sheet, making sure that you've got all this coded. And then uh, what I you, every 15 minutes, you want to give it a stir. So I have one of those little devices. I don't want to say her name right now because she'll pipe up, but it's the Echo Dot. And I'll set the timer for an hour, but I'll also set a reminder to stir for 15 minutes. And then I'll just say snooze for 15. And then I don't have to set any other timers. Okay. So once that goes, it's covered. I'm going to put it on the sheet, set it like a 250 degree oven, stir it every 20, uh, every 15 minutes. And like I said, that's half. This is the other half. So that makes what, you know what I didn't do? <laughs> I didn't put the oil in. Hold on one second. Oh my goodness. Um, but that makes quite a bit. You can see, I've got to close this out of my screen. So this is just half. And that either one is more than, well, this is definitely more than you get in a regular bag. So um, works out really well, smells good. And I hope you'll try it. Whatever version you like, peanut butter, almond butter, nut, you know, seed butter, whatever combination you can use, less expensive nuts. You can use seeds, you can use a combination, whatever tastes appeal to you. Uh, back to you, Vicki. Thanks, Michelle. So the next thing I'm going to make is called curried rice. And another really budget-friendly meal that um, really pulls together easily with low cost ingredients and will feed a large group. So I like this one, it's handy. My daughter actually came up with this idea when she was in her first apartment as a way to kind of keep it easy after a full day of school, you know, studies at, um, in college. And, um, you know, but again, very affordable. So this starts with rice. And so, of course, and I'm using brown rice, you could use white rice, you could use any kind of rice that you like. But I do find it handy to make the rice ahead of time, you could actually just do it same day and then just use the warm rice to mix in that would be fine too. But I like to have my ingredients ahead when I can. So I made a little bit a little batch of rice yesterday, refrigerated it, and then measured out for this recipe, five cups of brown rice. And so that's what we've got here. So the actual recipe today will start with sauteing one onion. And so I've got one onion here. I actually sauteed it in water, but you could use oil, whatever works for you. And then to this now, I'm going to be adding all of my other ingredients. So normally I cook it on the stove, but so to make sure you could watch me, I actually prepared the vegetables ahead in the microwave. So this is just one package of it's a 10 ounce package. My recipe says a pound, but they it's harder to find one pound packages these days. It's 10 ounces. You could use two packages if you wanted or, or kind of whatever works for you. Any kind of vegetables works that you like. This is just the mixed vegetables. Um, and I actually just steamed it for a few minutes in the microwave. It's it's cool now, so I can kind of add it all together and I would heat it and then serve. But normally I would prepare it on the stove and it would all be hot at the same time. So I would do this onion, then I would add my frozen vegetables. It could be broccoli, mixed vegetables, you know, any kind of combination you like. They make all kinds of interesting combinations, broccoli, cauliflower, and carrots, and so on. So again, whatever you like, one or two packages of frozen vegetables added to this hot pan with the sauteed onion just kind of stirring it until everything becomes nice and tender and heated through. And so now we'll just kind of pretend we're on the heat and I'm going to add to this um, pan, my onions, I'm going to add my mixed vegetables. And then on top of that, we'll add our rice. five cups of, of rice of your choice, and then our seasoning. So I've got two teaspoons of curry powder. And curry powder is a mixture that includes a number of other um, seasonings. And so it adds a really nice flavor without a lot of work. And now I'm adding a little bit of salt. Again, that would be something you can choose or not to put in. 
And then I'm just mixing this up. And normally while I've got all of this happening, I toast my, uh, my um, for a topping, I toast some slivered raw almonds in the oven. I actually did it on the stovetop today. So I just in a dry pan until you begin to smell them. So kind of on a lower heat, lower to medium, I actually get impatient. So I did kind of a medium to high, but just for a couple of minutes till I could smell them. And so then we'll be able to add these lovely almonds to our rice and it just kind of dresses it up. If you choose to not include the nuts because the nuts are a more expensive ingredient than the rice and the vegetables, you can often buy frozen vegetables for around a dollar or so, sometimes when they're on sale. Um, and that's a very nice cost friendly, you know, wallet friendly way to get some vegetables into your diet. So now I've got this lovely rice mixture with the vegetables that looks like this. And to that, I'm going to add my almonds on the top, sprinkled on top. And if you wanted to, you could use cashews or pistachios or macadamia nuts or anything you like, you know, whatever kind of interesting thing, peanuts, in fact. Um, and now I'm adding a little bit of raisins. Now, some people prefer not to have that mixture of the sweet in here, but I think it adds nice kind of combination of flavors along with the savory that you get from the curry, the crunch from the nuts, and I like that mixture. So we've got our mixture here and it's all ready to enjoy. We just need to heat it up and we've got our vegetables with our slivered almonds and you could use currants or raisins on top or dried cranberries for that matter. And it's all ready to enjoy. So here, we'll just kind of mix that up, those raisins and uh, could add fresh herbs to this as well. And we'll just plate it because you'd want a big bowl of this. It refrigerates beautifully for leftovers during the week, makes a really nice lunch to carry with you as well. And we've got our curried rice. Michelle? Looks good. And uh, the apple didn't fall too far from the tree with your daughter coming up with the recipes either. <laughs> uh, next, I'm going to make a chickpea salad. Um, first thing I'm doing is adding two cans of uh, rinsed and drained chickpeas. They're very inexpensive. Uh, and you can, I mean, to save a little bit more money, you can buy the dry and cook them yourself on the stove or in an instant pot. But one of the things I like to point out, if you think you know, we want to make it easy. If you're not used to cooking your own, then just buy the can because if you think, eh, I've got to soak them and do all that other stuff, you might not make the food. So the next, so I'm putting two cans of the chickpeas in here and then an avocado. Now, most people like to whack it with a knife and to take the seed out, which is what I used to do until I uh, was in um, getting occupational therapy for my wrist and my OT said, don't, my occupational therapist said, don't do that because of avocado hand or thumb. And it's, uh, there's some pretty unpleasant injuries when people miss this, the seed, the avocado pit. So I have gone back to just using a spoon. So nice ripe spoon. I think avocados, <laughs> nice ripe spoon, nice ripe avocado. They're coming down in price, but if you don't want to use that or you don't find a good one or too much money, then you can use a different, like a plant-based may mayonnaise, maybe make one from silken tofu or uh, cashews, or even you know with white beans, you can do it. So whatever you like, or just buy uh, vegan A's or something like that. And then some lemon juice. I've got three tablespoons, which I like it when the recipes call for the amount because this took two lemons to get three tablespoons this time. So I'm gonna pour that in. And another thing, just to make things last a little bit more, you can take, after you squeeze them, you could just uh, cut some of that rind up and put it you know, in your water so you're not wasting that. So I'm just gonna mash this up a bit. Now, this recipe calls for fresh dill. So you know, fresh herbs can add up in price. So and I haven't started growing mine yet this year. So I'm using 
uh, dried. And that, you know, the, when you buy the herbs at the store, they don't last a heck of a long time. So this is another way to get, you know, decrease the waste is just to use the um, dried, which is about a third of the amount called for with um, in the recipe for fresh. Got that mashed up. I like the color that the, oh, excuse me, that, oh my, I don't know where my voice went. I don't know if anyone else is having trouble with allergies, but mine have really kicked up this year already. Um, so that was the first. All right, and then I'm going to add in a third of a cup of celery. There's a lot of different textures in here. The creaminess of the avocado, the crunch of the celery, the red onion, a lot of different colors in here too, and more crunch. So the dill I'm using, I'm going to put a little more and some nice hot sauce. You can leave that out if you don't want it. Oh, that dill smells good. And if you're looking for something that people will often use different chickpea recipes or chickpea salads as a, uh, an alternative to the tuna fish that now that they're vegan, they're no longer eating. So adding dill or other uh, seasonings that are often used with uh, seafood or some uh, seaweed is a good way to get around that. Um, the recipe does call for, I'm going to mash this up a little bit more, um, whole wheat bread. We're gluten-free over here. Options are few. So what you could do, you could make, um, you, you can use a wrap, you can use gluten-free bread. If you are uh, gluten-free and vegan, I just uh, caution you to read the label carefully because they often have egg whites in gluten-free bread. So I'm using um, the Ezekiel English muffins that are gluten-free and they uh, can be used if you are a hockey player and you don't have a puck, they work. Just fine. Oh, or it would have been great to put my lettuce on. Here it's from here. Now I have red leaf lettuce on here. I like, I tend to get, whenever I can, I like to add more color. So the red leaf has the lovely pigment in it that adds a little bit more uh, antioxidants and Phytochemicals are healthy, but we already have that in the red onion. But if you're looking, uh, some greens are going to last longer than others. So if you don't use them a lot, then you might want to get like romaine hearts. They last a long time. And there are different things that you can do. There are different, like, I don't know all of you, if you got that, I sent a link for uh, how to store food because it's important. A lot of the packages that food comes in is not what it's really meant to be stored in. And that's, I mean, you wouldn't expect that. You'd think whatever you got in would be good. So just how you store it in the refrigerator, what part of the refrigerator, uh, making sure you're not storing uh, foods or fruits and vegetables that give off ethylene. Those are the, that's the gas that makes uh, foods ripen faster. You don't want to put those with foods that are sensitive to it. So you can look those things up. There are a lot of different, things like so you don't want to store you know bananas and apples like you don't want them uh, giving off a lot of gas and ripening up faster that's what happens if you've ever bitten into a really mushy um, macintosh apple it's from the ethylene so just there are things you can do like I said different like when you get a bag you know a bag of uh, like spring mix or other greens you want to take them out of that bag put them into a different container and either use a dishcloth or a paper towel to absorb the moisture, they'll last a lot longer that way. So again, trying to do things so that we don't have as much food to waste. Back to you, Vicki. Thank you. Um, the last recipe I'm making is called oven baked pears. So it's a nice dessert that you can add to your menu that is super easy and very flexible. So what I'm starting with is three but again, you could kind of expand this um, to as many as you want. I'm starting with three fresh pears and I, I bought these yesterday and I purposely made sure that the pears that I bought were kind of firm because since they're going to be baking on top of 
you know, they're going to be baking, they're going to naturally get softer. So I like to kind of start with one that's not going to fall apart. So I'm dividing, I'm taking a nice pear. This is the Bosque style pear. And I'm using the end of a um, little melon scooper just to pull out the core. Now, if you wanted to, you could use any kind of pear, something, a different kind of pear. You could even do this with apples. So really it's quite flexible, um, whatever you, whatever fruit you wanna use for this. But I think the pears work really well as a base, nicest time of year. And so what I will be doing with these pears is putting them into a pan to bake at 350 for about 20 minutes. Then I pull it out of the oven and to this, um, to the middle of the, you know, into the, the, the well in the center, I will put a little bit of my homemade granola. Um, you could use mine, I actually have on my website, you could use Michelle's, you could use a store-bought kind, you could actually use any cereal that you like, you could use a co uh, like cornflakes or, um, you know, a Cheerios type of anything that you like, but I like granola because it's nice and crunchy. So. I'll take just a little bit of it after 20 minutes and put it into the center of each of these, put it back into the oven for about another 10 minutes and, um, and then pull it out of the oven. At any point you want, you can sprinkle with a little bit of cinnamon or apple pie spice. And after um, 30 minutes, we're putting it in like this and then we'll add our, our center at um, the, 20 minute mark. After 30, it looks like this. So I've got my granola in the middle, just a little bit. You could certainly add more and maybe we will because why not? We could just add a little bit on top. We've got our lovely cinnamon, which makes it smell wonderful. Then you could add just a little bit of fresh berries if you like. I'm using frozen berries because again, frozen berries are a great way to save a little bit of money because you can pull them out as you need to. I actually took the entire package and thawed it today, but you know, you can just take out a portion so you never have to worry about wasting them. And then I can just pour a little bit on top. You get the juices when it's frozen. It's really nice and affordable because these are picked at the time that they're, you know, ripest and freshest and then frozen. So we've got just a lovely, very simple dessert. I could add a little bit more of the juice just to make it even more lovely. And here, we'll just take one and put it on a plate to show you, or two. And we've got, as easy as that, a lovely baked pear in 30 minutes. Michelle? It looks good, Vicki. So next thing I'm gonna make is a baked tofu. It is a, a sweet citrus marinade, but it's spicy. It's got some heat. It's got ginger and hot pepper, um, or yeah, a hot pepper sauce. The um, thing that I left off was the black uh, tofu. That's important. So it's extra firm tofu, not silken. Silken doesn't work with this. So you take the tofu I bought, um, just even at Whole Foods, organic tofu is $1.27 for the block, which is very reasonable. And I do like to get uh, organic for tofu because it is a very, uh, soy is a heavily um, genetically modified crop. So I like to avoid that. I put the, I, I drain the, the tofu out of the carton and then I put it, uh, you can use paper towels or dish towels and then put a weight on it. I've got this wonderful weight that my mom gave me and it gets all the, a lot of the extra fluid out. So put that there. And then what I like to do, which is my way of cutting it, is that I cut it in half approximately. And then I cut it in thirds. I'm gonna cut it in half again. And then I cut the each plank in thirds. So I get 12 pieces and I put it in a baking sheet. It's very versatile. You can use all different kinds of marinades with this, this idea. I love making it with um, 
like a barbecue flavor and the smoke and the maple syrup. I love it. It's very versatile, very inexpensive, comes together quickly. It's well, it's you marinate it for a while, but I mean it is the prep itself is very easy. in a baking dish and then I will mix the ingredients for the marinade. Put it in a, um, a liquid measure. And I've got a half cup of, of orange juice. You can buy a small bottle of it or you can squeeze some oranges, whatever you prefer. And to that, I'm gonna add, um, it says soy sauce or tamari. Soy sauce has wheat and soy sauce and tamari have a ton of sodium. So if you're watching your sodium, I recommend using one of the aminos. I happen to love the coconut aminos. It's even less sodium. It adds a, kind of a sweet taste to the um, final dish here. I've got, a tablespoon of minced ginger. I love the smell of it. I just peel it with the back of the spoon and then use a microplane. And you can do that with um, the whole thing if you have, so you don't have any left over and freeze it that way, or you can peel it, freeze it, and then puree it when it thaws out. So just to avoid wasting on that, I've got um, the sriracha or whatever kind of hot sauce you'd like. You can add more or leave it out, whatever you like. And I have some, just a tablespoon of brown sugar and two cloves of garlic thickly sliced. Uh, if you don't have garlic or um, maybe it, you open it and you cut into it and it doesn't look so hot, you can use uh, garlic powder. And it's usually about an eighth of a teaspoon of the powder to, to uh, to make up for each clove of garlic. So that works. And then I'm just going to pour this over. There are a lot of people that have, like with a lot of different foods, there are many different recipes, different versions, different approaches to it. So this recipe says to, usually says to do it for uh, 450 degree oven, 15 minutes, turn it, put more marinade on, uh, turn it again and cook it for another 10 and then, and then another five. I just do two things of 15, that works. So then I cover that with foil. I'm not concerned about that little bit of foil, that little bit of exposure. And I put it in the refrigerator a couple hours at least so that it can soak up the goodness. Goes out like this. Nice golden brown. Usually I'll put some uh, green onions on there for a garnish. It's very versatile, it's very simple to make and inexpensive. It's really that, like I said, um, needs to be firm, extra firm tofu, no silken. So a lot of the um, shelf stable packages are silk. I just wanna make sure nobody has that experience. It will not work with silken tofu. And that's it. All right. Thank you both so much. Um, let me see. Michelle, do you have a favorite way to eat that tofu that you just demoed? Well, different, like maybe with uh, some rice or some greens, something like that. Sometimes it goes into a wrap or, you know, for other people's sandwich. Um, just, we end up just snacking on it sometimes too. It's just really, it's tasty and it's easy. The pieces, you know, they're, they're nice like that, I think. And um, how do you think you'd like it? Oh gosh, all of those things that you recommended yeah. sound great. Yeah. And the other thing I wanted to say was when you're turning it over, like I don't dump all the marinade on. I, um, so I will take a spoon when I'm turning the tofu over and I'll just put it on top of each piece. I don't want it burning on the 
-hmm. the sheet. And that brings me back to like, I love using silk hats, you know, the silicone liners mm -hmm. so that I can reuse them. These, especially when you're using more of like the maple syrup kind of a marinade, it can get sticky. Well, this has the brown sugar. So I use uh, non-bleached um, baking sheets okay. because it just makes kind of a big mess. And I don't think it's helped the life of my silk hat. So I use my grungy, my older baking sheets and um, baking pans and then the, the parchment. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, that makes sense. I have the same issue with some of my um, reusable baking sheets. All right. Yeah, that was just my own question. They look so delicious. I was wondering what you usually uh, eat them with. Okay. I am going to add Vicky to the spotlight now so we can see you both. Okay. All right. So we have a couple of questions so far. If anyone else has any questions, please feel free to add them to the chat now. Um, Michelle, the first question is for you. And someone's just wondering how long does the granola keep and how should you store it? Well, you've got a big important. That's a great question because it's really important to let it cool thoroughly. Just let it be completely cool and then put it into, you know, I'm a mason jar like Vicki. We love our mason jars and I have the leak proof that they're just nice tight seals. So I put them in there and we don't ever have it long enough to give a real outside date. I don't um, really. I don't know. I think it would, it should last as long as, you know, the kind you get in a bag or you could, once it's totally cool, put it in a resealable bag and put it in a, doesn't need to be in the refrigerator. Just, you know, store it like you would store other granola. Vicki, how long do you, does yours last? So I, um, I, mine literally will last months. Um, it, I made a double batch. I have made a double batch. You know, sometimes I give this as gifts, um, but I do refrigerate it and it literally lasts for as long as um, all of the ingredients would in the refrigerator, you know, the nuts, the um, the oats and so forth. So yeah, beyond weeks for sure. Yeah, and it, it, like good point about depends on what else you're putting in there too, you know, for uh, how to store it. But yeah, it, my son loves granola. It doesn't, it sees the light of day, but not too many days. Absolutely. So. A great option that can store for a while if you don't happen to eat all of it yes. super quickly. Yeah. <laughs> all right, good to know. And you can oh. look at this is a half batch and it's still made quite a bit. So you can just right. make half a batch. Absolutely. Right. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, I need to make myself some homemade granola. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, Vicki, someone had a question for you about the stuffed potatoes. They're just asking, are the potatoes supposed to be eaten cold or warmed up? You can actually eat these cold, but I think that they're best probably warm. But um, yeah, I normally do warm them before I, you know, enjoy them. You can also stick this at this point into an air fryer to get it a little bit crispy on the outside as you heat it. Um, so it just kind of depends what texture you prefer. But usually just for something quick, I just will microwave it for, you know, a minute or less, or, you know, depending on how cold it is and how many there are. But literally, we really do eat these for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. They're just such an easy grab, so full of nutrition, so inexpensive, so easy to make, like a lot, and um, really nice just to add with whatever you're having for dinner, you know, maybe a salad or some steamed greens or um, a cup of soup or whatever. So yeah, really nice to have um, um, handy. All right, very nice. Um, all right, it looks like someone had just a comment about the granola, a good tip to saying don't put in fresh fruit or maybe not even dried fruit until just before eating if you want it to keep for a long time. So right. yes, again, yeah. As yeah, you that's why like the freeze, like when you buy it in the store, usually it's freeze dried fruit in there. Mm -hmm. So that's the option to make it last longer. But that's why I gave just the simple recipe so you can add in things later too. That's a good point. Perfect, perfect. Okay. And you're in the mood for that day too. Yeah. It does. And Absolutely. you know, you could add, like Michelle said, chocolate chips, or I was thinking you could do that to my baked pears as well. I mean, all of the things that Michelle and I have shown you tonight, you can kind of personalize in whatever way you like to add your favorites. I do add after my bake, my, um, my granola, I do add 
dried, freeze dried fruit. So I like to add strawberries and blueberries, sometimes raspberries, but you know, mango is good. anything. They're all good. So yeah. you can definitely kind of mix and match and add um, chocolate chips or coconut or whatever kinds of things you like okay. best. Very yeah. nice. Yeah. We love a versatile food. And Vicki, you said, I remember from another cooking demo you did, you said you often get your free dry, freeze dried fruit at Trader Joe's. Is that correct? Yeah. I do. Yeah. Uh, you can find it elsewhere, you know, Whole Foods or other places, but it's a fraction of the cost I find at Trader Joe's. So I usually buy whatever varieties they have on hand um, and, and just keep them handy. They're just nice to snack on when you kind of feel like having a potato chip or something, so just something a little crunchy. Um, you know, it's, it makes a great car snack because it just doesn't need refrigerating or anything. And so, yeah, but I also just like to use them in um, a variety of ways in, in dessert. So they are a really nice, handy, um, you know, addition. If they are, they're wonderful. I just always like to caution people about it just because of something that happened with my mom. I gave her the blueberries, which are great. And then she opened her mouth. <laughs> just totally purple tongue so it just tends to uh, do that a little bit more than the fruit does the fresh fruit so but those are great and in general saving money at, i mean trader joe's prices are much more reasonable and looking around is a good way and the berries i think are great like vicky said to buy because when you are buying fresh berries or you're buying food that's more perishable you want to be sure you're planning your food so that you're eating those foods that are going to go bad faster or have less of a shelf life um, eat those first. And that's why frozen berries are just so perfect because they last a very long time in the freezer. Absolutely. Yeah, I totally agree. I always try to have on hand a mixture of different fresh or different, I should say, frozen berries and different, you know, fruits in the freezer because they come in so handy for baking or for turning into a quick cobbler or for adding over desserts. Um, non-dairy ice cream, non-dairy yogurt, whatever, you know, there's so many ways you can use it. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I just was going to add that if you are giving a package of the dry, freeze-dried fruit to um, also to children, there's a little packet in there of that silica stuff mm -hmm. that often, you know, to keep the moisture out. So you'll want to fish that out before you give it to somebody to um, eat who may not be watching for them. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, that's definitely a good call. All right. Um, Vicki, what kind of curry powder do you use or do you ever make your own? Um, I, I don't make my own. Um, I, I use different, I've used different kinds. I sometimes go to the spice market at Carytown in Ann Arbor and will buy, they have different mixtures there, all kinds of different variations. And sometimes I've bought them from you know online and I've done different things but I'm today I'm just using one that's Spice Islands um, I sometimes use the Whole Foods um, organic and brand I can't think of the name that is that they carry but um, yeah so I, I use different ones but this mixture is cumin coriander fenugreek ginger turmeric um, dill seed, black pepper, red pepper, cardamom, mace, and cloves. So it's a lot of different things. I don't make my own, but I really enjoy mixtures. I'll, I, I enjoy all of them. I usually like to have on hand the spicier one. You can find a hot mm. curry sometimes, and I do like that as well. So yeah, they're just use experiment a little bit, see what you like. Yeah, and that's yeah. something you can buy the small jars. Like all these little things I have, are, I'm, I'm not too far from a Penzi's. So I get a lot of Pensy's uh, spices. I have the hot curry and the curry now and other things. And I always save these because they're great to repurpose. But just mixes are great to have too. So the curry mix, an Italian seasoning mix, apple pie or pumpkin pie mix, those are things that you're probably going to use more often and can get a bigger jar of. But you can buy in bulk too. Or and if you're unfamiliar with one, buy a smaller size. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, it's great how how versatile all these different spices and spice blends are for sure. Someone said as well, there are several Indian grocery stores in Ann Arbor area that have wonderful curry powder. Mm -hmm. Very true. Yeah. And yeah. elsewhere outside of Ann Arbor as well. I know a couple in Ann Arbor are Patel Brothers and Bombay uh, Grocers, um, both awesome yes. stores. But yes. yeah, just 
If you're unfamiliar with curry powder or other spice blends, just try to get a couple in some small jars and taste them out. And they're wonderful. They're anti-inflammatory because of the turmeric in there, and they've got a lot of wonderful spices that help with digestion. So they're, they're very good for you. Absolutely. Absolutely. Spice up your food. Mm -hmm. Okay. And doesn't have to be hot spicy, just adding, no. adding flavor no. to it. Definitely. Okay. okay. Well, I mean, we just have a couple minutes left. That's all of the questions, except I was just wondering if either of you have any additional, just like general tips on how you eat plant-based on a budget. Um, I don't know if you have anything else to share. You've shared so much great information already, but anything additional? Well, I think well, like when I'm starting to say like we do throw 30 to 40% of our food away and that uses a lot of water and the greenhouse gases, all that's really bad. But I think learning that you don't have to throw so much away there, you can use more of the parts and most people know you can make your own veg stock. You just don't want to use like cruciferous vegetables, potatoes, or squash, even though you can make soups of those, you don't want to use them for the veg stock. And so the cruciferous vegetables make them bitter or taste kind of sulfurous and the other softer vegetables just kind of go to mush. So, but other than that, you know about that, you know about using overripe bananas for banana bread. You, they're great for, you know, peeling them and, and putting freezing chunks to use for nice cream, but just stuff like, you know, when people buy beets that maybe have the greens, they tend to throw those out. No, cook them, they're good. Or the, you know, the carrot tops or like the stems for parsley, out the, the nutrients are in all of those. So you can, make a pesto, you can put them in the soups, you can juice them, you know, they're just, we do throw out a lot more than we have to. So. And I would just add to that, all of those are great tips, Michelle. Um, and to be kind of looking for when you're in the grocery store, what's on sale in the produce section, because a lot of times that's the freshest stuff that's in season. So that's a great place to gather up a few things you'll use during the week. And one of the things that Michelle said about planning what you're going to use so that you don't have waste, I think that's really critical because it's so easy to overbuy when things look great in the store and then maybe you're not going to end up using it. So to kind of have an idea of what you might be using things for during the week so that you don't get more than you'll be able to use. But then using, you know, whatever is fresh, um, maybe apples are on sale or something like that at this time of year finding you know, a little bit of a cost savings per pound in those items. And then the rest to kind of have on hand in the freezer where you can. So you might have some frozen spinach or kale or some other kind of mixture of greens that, are, um, that you can add to soups or to your rice dishes and so on, so that you can kind of keep the, your, your budget um, you know, in, under control. Um, but the other thing I was gonna say about vegetables is that it's great to kind of use whatever is freshest and looking delicious and adding some frozen to it, but you can extend that into more meals by adding rice or potatoes. And so these are the foods, the rice, the potatoes, the grains that, um, you know, oats, things like that, that help really keep us full. So if you can use these delicious, healthy ingredients and extend them with things that'll be satisfying, you can create a lot of meals without spending a lot of money. And that's a good point, Vicki. Uh, and then again, storage is important and extending the life even more. But just when you said something about price, and I think what happens with some people, they'll look at the unit price and it'll look fantastic to get this gigantic bag of something. And maybe, you know, you're not going to use it. So then you end up throwing out a lot. So just kind of go more by what you think you can use up and not so much, oh, this is a great deal if you're not going to be able to eat it. 